We have to geek out about these chips. Computer chips. Come on, focus. Focus. That's totally not gonna work on my camera here. Here we go, folks. We have our lineup for the new processors going into premium tier phones next year. The three main players kicking off 2023, Google with the Tensor 2, MediaTek with the Dimensity 9200, and Qualcomm just took the wraps off the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. What's exciting about these competitors they're making slightly different claims about performance and power efficiency. And that's what good competition should look like, not smaller companies chasing a market leader and just playing copycat. I'm gonna be using the phrase SOC a lot in this video. That stands for system on chip. When you take all the little computer parts like the CPU, the GPU, machine learning parts, et cetera, et cetera, when you take all of those little bits and you slap them on one slab, that's an SOC. It's more specific than saying the phone's processor because there's more than just a processor on this. And I'm gonna get a little nerdy with some of the descriptions of things like CPU cores, but this is a very general level conversation. Look to channels like Tech Tech Potato and Gary Explains. I'm sure those guys are gonna be doing much more granular analysis. I'm jumping in because I think this is exciting as there are going to be a few tangible consumer differences and how each company makes their compute parts. But enough of the preamble, we can start with Tensor 2 because it's already here. Tensor Generation 2 is a modest refinement to Tensor 1. The CPU performance sees a small uplift, but the bigger gains came to graphics and AI processing. This is where benchmarking is complicated. Running a graphics test on Geekbench, my Pixel 7 Pro scores lower than my Pixel 6a, but on every game I play, I get better frame rates on the Pixel 7. That's the main mantra for Tensor. Google is not trying to land the biggest benchmark numbers, but they're trying to make hardware that better complements their specific services. It's more a play towards optimization. Looking at the actual chip in the phone, we see an unusual CPU core configuration. Tensor uses two big power cores, two medium-sized performance cores, and four little efficiency cores. No other SOC is using an arrangement like this. That is a specific Google design, two, two, four. On the software side, the Pixel 7 is notable for only supporting 64-bit apps, and the hardware here should support 32-bit applications. But once we transition to 64-bit only software, we should see some improvements to performance and battery life. That 64-bit only transition might happen next year, because that seems to be a focus for MediaTek. It's so funny moving from a phone as a prop to an actual SOC. Last year's Dimensity 9000 was the first truly premium tier SOC from MediaTek, and it was an incredible first effort. MediaTek led the benchmarking charts for the first half of 2022 with a performance per watt that crushed Qualcomm's 8 Gen 1 SOC. The Dimensity 9200 seems to be a modest refresh with one critical change coming. I appreciate that MediaTek is keeping a lot of the big claims in check. The numbers they show aren't revolutionary. They seem to be more of a focus on smaller performance improvements, but better power efficiency. Pointing to some general bar graphs saying there will be a 10% lift to CPU performance, but a 25% reduction in power consumption sounds pretty nice to me. I think we're all sort of overpaying for compute power these days. I'm sure if you ask your family, do you want more computer power or do you want to get more battery life? I'm sure we could predict what they might say. I digress. MediaTek is still going for some of those big benchmark numbers and they were quick to show off hardware-based ray tracing, though not many games are going to support that when these phones launch. And of course, improvements across the board to 5G performance, camera processing, AI, and the 9200 supports the next generation Wi-Fi 7. This chip's CPU configuration looks more familiar than the Tensor. There's one big core, three medium-sized cores, and four little power cores. The Tensor is 224, the Dimensity, is one, three, four. The big change year over year though is found on the medium cores. MediaTek is pushing to a 64-bit only CPU configuration. Most apps on Android have migrated to 64-bit, 
We think the Android OS will probably migrate to 64-bit next year. MediaTek thinks it's the right time to drop 32-bit support and optimize their SoC for 64-bit only software. And this helps us explain one of the major differences between MediaTek's top chip and Qualcomm's premium chip. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has just been announced, and the claims are a little bolder coming from Qualcomm. Qualcomm is boasting 35% uplifts in compute and 40% better power consumption. When we talk about those internal comparisons, it really matters what we compare against. As the numbers Qualcomm is showing here, they look generational. Qualcomm comparing 8 Gen 2 against 8 Gen 1. The 8 Gen 1 was not a very power efficient chip. These numbers don't seem to be comparing the 8 Gen 2 against the 8 Plus Gen 1. The 8 Plus was a significantly more power efficient chip. If we're saying 8 Gen 2 is 45% more power efficient, well, the 8 Plus Gen 1 was roughly 30, 35% better power efficient in heavy lifting tasks like graphics intense gaming. Similar claims to MediaTek improved 5G performance, improved camera processing, ray tracing on the graphics, and that next gen Wi-Fi 7. The core configuration is the interesting difference. Qualcomm is going with one big core, two medium 64-bit cores, two medium 32-bit cores, and three little power efficient cores. Qualcomm's play this year is a little more conservative. Two of those medium cores are sticking around to support legacy 32-bit apps if needed. Which should be interesting to see if Google pushes Android to 64-bit only, it would seem like this would be unnecessary hardware to include on a premium tier device. We're not talking about the mainstream bread and butter $400 phones, we're talking about the exotic bleeding edge hardware. That's where we test all the new tech. So just to break it down again, Tensor is 224, Dimensity is 134, and Snapdragon is 1223. I know I'm grossly <laughs> oversimplifying all this, but I'm excited to see it. This is exciting to see these structural differences at play. Each of these chips will have more distinct, more nuanced pros and cons, and those architectural differences probably won't be reflected in synthetic benchmarking scores. Google, they're leaning more on machine learning hardware for camera and assistant features. MediaTek, pushing the more forward-thinking approach to 64-bit support, Qualcomm kind of splitting the difference for legacy software. Tensor is built specifically to handle the Google Camera app. Qualcomm is making a direct play to support the new 200 megapixel sensors coming from Samsung. MediaTek building support for new pixel arrays on camera sensors that don't currently exist. That we know of. These differences, these little nuances, we can already get a glimpse of this in action playing with a Tensor 2 and one of my premium phones that's already using an 8 Plus Gen 1. My Xiaomi 12S Ultra crushes the Pixel 7 Pro in just about every synthetic test we can perform. But timing the completion of real-world tasks, Pixel performance is much closer than the gap we see in synthetic testing. And we see some interesting victories for the Tensor 2. One example, we know Google is good at chewing up image data. We shouldn't be too surprised that rendering video in LumaFusion, the Pixel can handily beat the more expensive Xiaomi. The Xiaomi crushes this phone for synthetic benchmarking, but it's not close rendering out an actual video. This is my call to action for all you geeks out there. If you care about getting the absolute best performance for the apps you really use, these little structural differences matter a lot more than just some big dumb number in a benchmarking app. I'm not asking average consumers to figure this stuff out. I'm talking to tech enthusiasts. You're watching a video with me nerding out about the semiconductor industry. So 2023 is shaping up to be a proper geeky good year for us high performance phone snobs. Have you been following the semiconductor news? Is there a feature or an improvement you're really excited about? Drop some of those comments down below. Let's, let's nerd out. I want those hot takes. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing. All the support has been amazing. Thank you so much, people clicking on links, hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, 
or joining the list of names on my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is the coolest collection of tech, nerd, pals, in the universe, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.